from um, Asian region. Uh, welcome to this uh, Eiffel webinar about the space Greece. We have uh, two excellent presenters today. Uh, so we'll start with uh, Susanna Mornati, who is a Chief Operating Officer at uh, for Science, and uh, Susanna and her, t her team uh, uh, developed uh, the space Greece, uh, which is free open source extension of this space that has uh, institutional repository as its core components, uh, and it'll, it also stores and manages data about research, which is conducted at an institution. So we'll start with uh, Susanna's presentation, and then uh, Georgi Benedishvili from um, uh, Scientific National Library in Georgia will talk uh, how they implemented this space crease. So he'll give practical example. And I suggest that uh, if you have some burning questions to Susanna, you can ask her right away. If not, then maybe you can. Uh, if it's if it's not a very burning question, then we'll just have all the questions in the end after two presentations. And please use the text chat to type in your questions, and I'll keep an eye on that, and then I'll I'll ask them to the presenters. So thanks a lot, and I'll stop with my introductions. And floor is yours, Zana. Thank you very much, Irina, and um, I'm very grateful to your organization, EIFL, and, and to you personally for inviting me uh, to talk about uh, this space, Chris. And uh, um, I have a lot of information to convey, of course, uh, a lot of slides, but uh, I'll try to keep it short to uh, allow also space for, for the Georgian friends and for uh, the questions or participants, which uh, who I also thank. And uh, um, and then the set of slides will be available anyway. So uh, please forgive me if I go very fast through some of them. I just want to convey the main concepts uh, in this uh, uh, introduction. Uh, so. Uh, just a few words about me, just in case you, you don't know me, which is uh, possible. Uh, I've been uh, working a lot in the open access community since uh, 2003. I've been recently a director of two large uh, national Italian projects, which is the biggest thing I've done so far. Uh, but the most courageous uh, thing I've done so far was uh, to start uh, uh, Operation Set for Science. We are a small Italian company, but uh, uh, full of enthusiast uh, guys who uh, are working for uh, uh, open access in an open source environment. So, um, why this space, Chris? Uh, uh, most of you, uh, I'm sure, will know that this space is the uh, most popular and diffused uh, um, uh, digital asset management system, free, uh, open source in the world. And it is uh, usually uh, used for institutional uh, repositories, so to uh, host uh, uh, the research output of institutions. But uh, mm, more and more institutions uh, are asking for uh, research information management and data management tools which is uh, um, related to the fact that uh, information is increasingly increasingly connected nowadays and uh, uh, the case for the persistent identifiers uh, such as ORCID, uh, the case for um, uh, providing uh, meaningful information, uh, not just the publication details, not just bibliographic information, um, was a powerful um, trigger uh, to start uh, uh, thinking about a, a, no, a free open source solution also for these uh, um, uh, use cases. So we thought, uh, since we were expert in this space, uh, uh, we thought, why not uh, using an, an extended version of this space to meet these uh, needs? And so uh, already in 2009, the team, which is now in for science, at for science with me and, um, and with Andrea Bollini, together with a team at the Hong Kong University, which was led by David Palmer, created this space, Chris. Here you find the link to all the documentation available. And there's also the list of uh, the uh, numerous users of this space Chris. Nowadays, it's almost 100 institutions that are already using it. So uh, it is becoming really a, a very large community. 
Uh, basically, it is an extended version of this space. Uh, and what's most notably is the uh, data model, which is uh, powerful and flexible. And uh, it allows institutions to describe not just publications, but all the entities that populate the research ecosystem and uh, all the uh, meaningful links and relations among these um, entities. Here you also find uh, in the slides a link to a, a demo site where you can uh, try using it and, and see uh, how it works. Um, so just to briefly describe what I mean with the research ecosystem, you know that at the center of this ecosystem you uh, usually find the publications. The publications have authors and authors are affiliated to uh, departments, to institutions, to organizations, to organizational units that belong to the same institution, for instance. And uh, um, publications are not just uh, uh, journal articles. There may be books, reports. Uh, there's a lot of information related to it. And uh, also projects. And it is increasingly more important, especially, uh, for instance, uh, uh, because of the funders' mandates uh, uh, to um, make information about projects available and uh, especially the research output of the projects available. And uh, uh, projects are related to research groups, to groups of uh, researchers and other institutions. And uh, uh, nowadays also the issue of research data, making available research data is more and more important for research funders, for instance, the European Commission. So you see how uh, these uh, research ecosystems gets populated with uh, with entities, and uh, you know research data can be reused by other research groups. So also the reusage uh, of information and of data and of publications and research results is increasingly more important. And um, so uh, the. Uh, this space uh, dealing with publications was really not enough to accommodate all these uh, um, entities. And uh, the alternative nowadays uh, is uh, to buy a commercial platform to manage this research information. These platforms are called the CRIS or RIMS, which means the Research Information Management System. But they're usually very expensive and they bind your institution to a proprietary system. And um, as um, uh, promoters of uh, free open source to support open science and uh, open access, we really thought that uh, we institutions need an open source and free system. So that's why we released uh, this space, Chris, um, together with the University of Hong Kong uh, to the community to, for usage for, uh, by everybody. And uh, so this provides your institution with a sustainable tool, an effective tool, to manage all research information, which includes researchers' profiles, department pages, projects, grants, awards, research outputs, um, patents, uh, matrix, and all the uh, reports and, uh, and statistics. I will just show you uh, very small examples, but then you, you will find the links to, to go deeper into it. Um, so uh, the the reason why I've already explained, so I will uh, I will uh, skip this uh, slide. Uh, it is also a beautiful tool. Uh, being free and sustainable doesn't mean that it should be ugly. So you see, for instance, here the homepage of the um, uh, repository for the uh, Cyprus uh, uh, University of Technology. Uh, of course, uh, uh, it will be aligned uh, to the new um, Angular JS uh, user interface, which will uh, come with DSpace 7. So it will also be adaptive and responsive. It is already like that, but we are working to improve it. It has uh, icons for intuitive uh, exploration, widgets for the most viewed, the most cited. So a lot of uh, fancy things that uh, researchers like a lot in, uh, in their institution. And uh, here you see um, the um, record for an item, and you can see that uh, uh, besides the usual bibliographic information you have on the left side, you also have uh, these uh, uh, widgets to show the uh, metrics of the item, so the Scopus citations, Web of Science citations, the alt matrix, uh, which is also becoming more, more relevant, which means that uh, you can see how many times this uh, paper was uh, cited uh, in the uh, most um, diffused social media. and. Uh, 
So you see here, some, uh, the most important thing here is the links to the other entities. So the authors here are not just a string of text, but they are um, uh, entities in the system with a page and a link uh, to, the, to the publication. And this allows you to, to build the whole system of linking and navigation throughout all the entities of the, of the system. Uh, the DOI also is um, uh, clickable and it takes you to the, to the DOI page of the publisher, which could also be an open access publisher. And here, as I said, there's a widget with um, uh, external information that can be gathered about this item. And this is a researcher page. The researcher page uh, um, uh, includes a lot of significant information. For instance, here you find uh, uh, the department, which is also clickable because also departments have uh, a page and you can list there uh, all the um, researchers that are affiliated to the department and all the publications that are published there and also aggregate statistics and uh, bibliometrics about the department and everything is done on the fly in real time by the system so when uh, an affiliation is changed the system reflects that and you, you do not have to do manual work for uh, for uh, listing and reporting all this information here you see the orchid the scopus id the researcher id by web of science so here you can also uh, list all the uh, significant uh, IDs that take you to another um, external um, uh, database and um, also all the name variants that you find in different publications, which is also an important issue for uh, many researchers. Um, and. Uh, here you see also there are other tabs uh, besides the profile. You have a tab for the bibliometrics, for the publications, and for the projects. And you can add as many entities as you want to, to deal with the system because the system is completely configurable. So if you want to add information about uh, projects, you can add it. If you want to hide it, you can hide it or, um, or add uh, other entities which are not shown here at the moment. And uh, uh, besides the... Um, uh, all this information you also have uh, on the top uh, um, right here uh, a link to other um, important information about this researcher so you have a link to his network lab which are we are going to to, to see in a, in a moment you have a, a link to the statistics related to this uh, uh, researcher because uh, besides uh, the statistics for views uh, and downloads uh, that you find uh, in the uh, um, normal DSpace repository, you also have aggregated statistics here that show you all uh, that uh, um, is related to the same researcher. And, uh, and then the claim profile button is uh, used to connect uh, your, um, uh, your page to the ORCID page so that you can exchange information about the profile, about the publications, and about the projects between your repository and ORCID to save uh, time for the researchers. Uh, both in the case they have uh, the information in the repository and want to transfer it to ORCID, and uh, also in the case they have already populated their ORCID page and want to transfer information in the repository which is also very convenient for researchers that move from one institution to the other and they do not have to redo all the work. Here you see when you hit the tab uh, bibliometrics that you have the aggregated matrix for this researcher, which means this is the sum of the total citations that all his papers got in Scopus and Web of Science and so on. And uh, um, here you see, oh, sorry, uh, the tab uh, for publications, which is listing all the publications that are related to this researcher. And all this is done uh, um, uh, using the navigation uh, buttons. So uh, here you see uh, the list of uh, his publications, and you also have uh, um, the opportunity to download this list in different formats and uh, uh, also in uh, bibliographic formats uh, to reuse it, uh, the, the data in, uh, in uh, different applications. Here you have uh, a view of the network lab. Uh, this is done um, automatically by the system by connecting the researcher at the center 
with these uh, co-authors, uh, which are the first level of uh, uh, in this uh, in this uh, circle, and uh, the second level is the co-authors of the co-authors, and you can expand it indefinitely, of course, for for viewing reasons. Here it is limited to two uh, degrees, but you can extend it. And when you click on one of these buttons, you get a a, a link to the uh, profile of the co-author, so you can link the two of them and uh, have uh, a, a list of the publications they have in common. Here you have the number, and uh, if you click on this number, then you get uh, uh, also the drill down, so the complete list of the publications that they publish together. Using the statistics tab, you can have a, a, a Google mashup of the uh, provenance of the hits and downloads of uh, your papers uh, on the net. And also uh, a chart here, in this case, you see a pie chart where you can see uh, where the downloads and the views of your uh, work uh, come from. As I said, uh, the Dispatch Chris is connected to ORCID. And we already upgraded it to version 2 of ORCID, which is the newest uh, version of the API. Uh, since the, the old one will be dismissed at the end of this year. And uh, um, through the repository, you can uh, claim your profile. You can also use the ORCID authentication, which is already uh, integrated into the space Chris, and uh, have a complete uh, um, synchronization between your profile and, uh, and the information which is contained in the, in the space Chris. And, uh, uh, we have recently worked uh, to extend the use case uh, to uh, deal with the research data. Research data are increasingly uh, more important. They've always been important, but uh, not to uh, the extent of being visible uh, for the research funders uh, and uh, the funders mandate uh, more and more require that uh, the data uh, where the publication was produced uh, are available. So uh, we decided to um, uh, enhance the, uh, the treatment of research data within this space, uh, uh, integrating it with uh, an application uh, that is called CCAN that allows you to visualize uh, the data that you deposited. So just for to make it short and, and, uh, and visible, um, I will show you how uh, tabular data can be uh, visualized uh, directly without uh, the need of downloading them from uh, the space quiz where they are deposited. And this interaction allows you to make your research data fair according to the definition that was um, adopted recently. You see here a link to the fair principles as uh, defined by Force 11. Um, which state that uh, the research data should be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And this integration between this, piece, this space and CCAN, which is also released uh, for free as open source, allows you to, uh, to fulfill these uh, requirements. So let's say that you have a record here with your, uh, with your research data. It is a record which is very similar to a, a publication record. Here you see also the page views and the downloads uh, for this. And uh, here uh, in the bottom, uh, you see the usual this space button view open, which allows you usually to download the item. But uh, here you see a new button, explore online which allows you to see the content of this data file uh, without the need to download it uh, in the first uh, um, uh, option. Uh, so if you have the tabular data, you see uh, directly on the fly the result of uh, the tabular data. You can see a grid where you can filter, see uh, just a few records. Uh, this is useful, especially if the file is very, very large. So you can have a look and, and see whether the data that are contained are useful for you or not. You can also uh, build a graph for this data on the fly, uh, choosing the type of graph and the, and the coordinates, so what you want to see on the, on the two axes. And then you can also, if the data are geolocalized, you can also see them on a, on a, on a Google map, so uh, see the location uh, for uh, for the data, and you have this interactive map visualization. So this is um, 
an addition that we made to, to this space quiz in order to uh, be able to accommodate research data and provide also some extra service about them. Uh, this is the integration, how the integration is done, and uh, uh, also relevant to this uh, is the integration with Dura Cloud. I'm very proud to announce to you that For Science became the first partner of uh, Dura Space to provide the Dura Cloud services, and we will uh, um, basically provide the Dura Cloud uh, in our time zone, which is Europe, Africa, Middle East, and so on, and. Uh, um, and so uh, there will be another partner in the world for the uh, digital preservation, which is very relevant for research data, even more than for publications, because uh, uh, research data are unique and exclusive, and uh, institutions uh, uh, do have a responsibility for keeping them available uh, for the future generations and for data reuse in general. So, um, beyond publications, we also are building add-ons for, for other functions, uh, which applied, for instance, uh, to audio and video content to be able to use it uh, without uh, downloading. And uh, they, we also provided uh, some uh, add-ons for um, image viewing, document viewing, uh, OCR, and so on. What are the priority of, uh, priorities of this space? Uh, first of all, the interoperability, bidirectional interoperability is very, very important. Uh, and uh, as you, you have seen with, uh, with ORCID and uh, more interoperability is uh, um, uh, undergoing to, to other uh, relevant uh, um, external applications and databases. The use of open standards, which allows uh, you to uh, reuse all your content in other contexts. The persistent identifiers uh, uh, that are the only way to uh, keep uh, all the um, uh, digital objects connected uh, and uh, well identified in the, in the network. The um, services for research data, uh, research data in uh, this space Chris uh, uh, have all these services available and are strongly connected with the researchers, the research group which uh, issued them and uh, the publications that uh, resulted from, uh, from the research. And uh, we are also using all these tools uh, um, to build digital libraries for the cultural heritage, which is uh, increasingly more uh, clo increasingly closer to the research uh, environment because uh, the, the needs for the treatment of digital objects are increasingly the same. And um, where, so what is the target of this space crisis? It's universities and research centers, of course, that can benefit for this uh, platform that preserves and disseminates all the information about research but also uh, this category of uh, galleries, libraries, museums, and archives that can benefit from this uh, implementation of a, a complete uh, uh, description of the, of the um, ecosystem uh, also for, uh, to provide a, a rich context for the digital assets of the cultural heritage. And uh, here you have uh, a... Um, uh, an example, uh, some some examples of the usage of this space Chris. For instance, uh, Digital Six is um, the repository, the Chris for the um, uh, uh, National uh, Spanish National Research Council. And uh, what is relevant here is that they chose to have this space Chris, even though they have an internal Chris already because the internal CRIS is useful to collect this information for internal purposes, but uh, uh, they realized that they would also like to have uh, a, a, an open environment where some of this information can be uh, shown and increase the visibility of the institution and uh, increase the impact of the institution, the chances for collaboration, the chances for research funding, so uh, this space case uh, is uh, used in this case uh, to uh, provide a, a window on the world. Uh, here you have, uh, uh, for instance, an example of this space case uh, used uh, to provide an ontological approach to uh, research content. 
this is the repository of the um, National Institute of uh, uh, Geophysics and Volcanology in Italy. And they have uh, um, this uh, repository, which is not just institutional, but also disciplinary. They um, collect uh, also papers from other institutions dealing with uh, atmosphere, cryosphere, hydrosphere, solid earth, and so on. Uh, and so if you want to have a semantic approach to the discipline, you click on atmosphere and then you, you um, click on the subcategory and, uh, and you find the relevant papers in your, uh, uh, that uh, are of interest for you. Another use of this Quiz is to provide a portal to other repositories. So uh, this Quiz can also harvest information and uh, uh, it is now uh, available also for the serif format that uh, um, describes uh, uh, all the entities uh, of the research domain. And uh, this is an example uh, which is realized with this space quiz, is the portal uh, for research in uh, Catalonia. And uh, it is collecting uh, data from uh, all the universities in Barcelona and, uh, and the area and exposing them, of course. So the current architecture uh, of, uh, of this space quiz uh, is an uh, addition to the DSpace functionality. So it is uh, uh, written in exactly the same technology. So if you are in, um, able to run a DSpace uh, um, repository, you can also uh, easily upgrade it to DSpace Chris because all the information which is in this space can be ported into this space Chris. And uh, then when you have this space Chris installed with your publication data, then you can add all the other entities that you want to configure in the system. While with the new version of this space, uh, you will uh, have a complete integration, which means that uh, we will be able to uh, create uh, the, uh, some extension points uh, to be able to run this space case as a plugin, and uh, everything will be done with the two new technologies of this space seven, which are uh, Angular JS for the user interface and the REST API to uh, transfer all information and uh, realize all the uh, integrations that are needed. So how can it be done? As I said, uh, uh, every institution can install it, but they, it is also easy to upgrade the space to the space quiz, so you don't uh, need to uh, stop your repository and run a different installation. You can uh, use it as an upgrade, so you can extend the management of the, your research publications, creating uh, new entities such as, for instance, the researchers or the projects as we've seen before. And uh, there's no difference in the management of the records, so your publications will be still safely managed as before. But uh, uh, in this way, you, you have the opportunity to add uh, the advantage of linking them to other relevant information such as uh, uh, the authors, uh, the data sets, uh, the projects, the matrix, the networks, uh, the statistics, and, and much more. When can it be done? It can be done now, because uh, this space case has been there for a while now. It has been adopted by 100 institutions, so it is a safe product. Uh, every moment is appropriate to enhance your repository to provide more information to your uh, audience and to your uh, researchers to support your research community and also making uh, your repository uh, this service more relevant for your institutional strategy and um, it doesn't take uh, much extra effort as uh, i said uh, the competence for running this space is the same uh, uh, for running this space Chris, with the same technologies but uh, this uh, extra effort to configure more entities is really rewarded by the extraordinary results that you can uh, get from this operation and um, just in case you're not happy but uh, I'm really confident that you don't want to do that you can still go back from this space Chris to this space without problems of course, you will lose the extra information that you put in the system, but your publications will still be safe. And um, so just uh, to conclude, uh, 
there's, as I said, there's almost 100 space case installations worldwide. Here you have a link where you can explore and see what's uh, going on in the world. Uh, it's uh, several continents already. And, uh, of course, it is a multilingual uh, tool so that you can, uh, the, the default installation is in English, but you can uh, add your uh, languages. And uh, um, it is uh, the only open source uh, Chris solution, so it uh, really makes uh, having a Chris sustainable also for, for institutions that cannot afford a commercial tool. And you have all the information and the uh, link for software download available on the uh, wiki that is uh, provided by the Dura Space organization. And you have the link here, and um, I'm, I can imagine the slides will be also available after the webinar conclusion. Just a last word about uh, for science. So um, we we were born last year, but uh, the people uh, constituting uh, for science have been in the D space community since 2003, so many many years. And um, we are a registered service provider. We have two D space committers, and uh, um, one of them is the lead of the REST API sub team for D space 7. So we are constantly engaged in a community. We have a very long time commitment in the open source and open standards, in interoperability, and we are contributing with our work to the most relevant international communities, which is. Uh, uh, ORCID, uh, Eurocris with Serif, uh, the Open Archives, uh, COAR, where one uh, of our um, mem team members are, is also in the in the um, next generation repositories working group and uh, and so on. So uh, I thank you very much for your attention. Here you can see the, the next uh, appointments where you can find us and uh, more will come. And uh, I'm uh, here for your questions, maybe after the Georgian friends have uh, spoken. So thank you very much for your attention. Thanks a lot, Susanna. Do you have any burning questions to Susanna? If you do, please use the text chat to type them. Uh, if you don't have immediate question, then think about your question and um, uh, write them uh, after Georgi's presentation. Oh, there is, there is, yeah, maybe let's, let's wait. I see that two people are typing. I, yes, I maybe know. it's good to to listen to the Georgian friends. Mm -hmm. and, okay, okay, then, and then maybe give all the questions in the end, so they have time to to type them and. We mm -hmm. can read them. Yeah, good suggestion. So please type your questions, sir, and I'll make sure that we'll address them after Georgi's presentation. Thanks. Okay, I'll stop my broadcast for a while and uh, listen to Georgia. Thanks. Uh, hello once again. Can you hear me? Yes, Georgi, we can hear you well. Okay, hello once again. I'm Georgi from National Science Library of Georgia. I'm currently work as a web developer here, software developer. And we downloaded and installed in this space Chris. Our main reason to do so is that we liked it very much because it's a free and open source version. And we already knew uh, what this space was. So um, we choose this space, Chris, for uh, our repository. Our main reason uh, is to um, choose this space, Chris, is that uh, we want to create a national repository. All the uh, data will be stored in our servers. It will be publications. Uh, journal articles and um, every info about research uh, and uh, research data will be available also. Uh, so we I'll show the pictures how it was look like when we installed it. Uh, so its main page we will see 
first. We can search all the research that are here. And uh, it's easy to navigate uh, and searching for what we want. So we can find here researchers, organizations, projects, and uh, publications here. So it has a nice search. We can filter the results if uh, search results are too uh, big. And it's a nice option for a search. Uh, so if you have used uh, tradition in this space, it will be easy to understand uh, what it is. Uh, all the data and uh, files are are divided by communities and uh, collections. So uh, we can administrate uh, each one easily and create uh, create accounts which will manage each of this one. Uh, so we can uh, upload our data and we can use other web services to import data from other sites. So it can be archive, org, PubMed, and we can also search by uh, digital object identifier. And we can import uh, the data to our repository. So uh, when we fill uh, this data, now we can also link uh, data that we previously uh, used for it. For example, at first line, uh, we used uh, existing organization to link for a new publication, for example. Now we can use uh, project, journal, and conference this here. And it will be linked to the publication. Uh, so when we look at this item, it's all the metadata we submitted already. So it can be title, authors here, list of them, and we can easily jump there. Uh, date, what uh, journal it is. And uh, here it may be a conference and other um, data. So it's abstract of the um, article and so on. We can uh, download uh, any file attached to here, view it. And we can also um, see the stats here, page views and uh, downloads there. Uh, so I like the most uh, um, version of Hong Kong University. It's uh, configured and uh, it's also nice with visual um, presentation. It's a researcher page you see here. And uh, you can download also CV here and uh, also research interests and other info are listed here. Mm, so we can see uh, geographical data where our items are popular and uh, where uh, they are downloaded most. And we can see nice map here, Google map. Exactly. Uh, so it's uh, we think that uh, metrics are also important for researcher, and uh, it will be listed on its page. You can see here how many times article is cited, uh, age index, and other relevant info. Yeah. So, thank you for your attention, and we are going to develop and testing more to learn the software further. So, thanks. Thanks a lot, Georgi. So now it's time for questions, and I already see two questions, and I guess they are to Susanna. So the first one is from. Uh, 
Branco. Is, is everything that is presented as features of the space crease available as open source or are there some proprietary extensions? Well, yeah, I, I think I can, um, I can uh, answer both questions together because they are related uh, to the business model. Um, so Nora is also asking why this space crease uh, is um, um, sorry, I, <laughs> I lost the question, but uh, okay, okay, is available as open source, are there any proprietary extensions? So um, let me say that uh, all extensions that you've seen today, so the ORCID integration, the CCAN integration, they are free. Uh, they, we release them for free, they're open source, so anybody can adopt it and uh, uh, there's no restriction for that and th there's no plans to make anything of that commercial i mean this space chris has a bsd license as um, as uh, this space the original this space uh, and everything which was released uh, up to now as the same uh, um, open license and uh, anybody can adopt it and make the use they want to do it with it and um, so you may ask, uh, what is the business model of for science then? Which is uh, an absolutely correct question, and I'm I'm very happy to answer it. Um, our business model is uh, to provide services for institutions that do not have enough expertise and uh, need some support to set it up uh, or or to upgrade it uh, or to to run it also or need uh, hosting, maintenance, uh, training consultancy analysis to set it up to configure it so we are based on uh, on uh, services and uh, so for us quality is really essential because this product is free and open source anybody can install it and run it and do what what they want so if they come to ask for our services it is because uh, they really need some expert support and um, what happens with the add-ons the other business model that we have is that we uh, release some add-ons asking for a contribution to uh, be able to invest on it. And uh, this is related to add-ons that you didn't see this morning, it's, uh, um, but we, you can find them on our website. And uh, what we do is that uh, we ask for an co initial contribution to be able to adopt it, and then we use this money to reinvest in, in other add-ons. If we didn't do that, we wouldn't have the resources to provide more services to the community, more, more uh, functionality, I mean. And um, when the, the platform or the contribution is reached, then we release it open source for everybody. So the first adopters will help the community to get the, the functionality for everybody. And um, so far we have uh, some uh, uh, institutions that uh, were uh, agreed to, to contribute to it. So uh, in this way, we will have the resources to fund the further uh, development and uh, further engagement uh, into the into the services for the community. I hope this uh, answered the questions, but please uh, don't hesitate to ask more. Thanks a lot, Susanna, and it's a very interesting business model. Any other questions? For Susanna or Georgi? I have a question for Georgi. <laughs> I think the the um, uh, project in uh, Georgia is very interesting, and uh, I would really like to to know how many um, researchers are involved in the service if it is already um, uh, working and uh, running for them, and uh, what are maybe the future plans of the National Science Library. So we are in testing phase and uh, we plan to um, work with organizations, research organizations and uh, individual researchers uh, to um, create repository at national level. And so we will do it.
Thanks. Okay. Uh, I think that, uh, national, probably... yeah, sorry. national initiatives are very interesting because uh, um, I think that it saves a lot of resources to do things in a collaborative way. So we are accustomed to institutions that want uh, to enhance their own visibility and that's a good uh, thing to do. But uh, also national uh, initiative, I think that can um, uh, really uh, provide uh, a, a good service for all institutions at the same time saving, uh, saving resources. It will be great if it uh, will be central because everyone has its uh, small repositories there and uh, we want to unify them and uh, add uh, data here. So I see that Vyacheslav is typing. It's a question to Georgi. What's about your total efforts, man months related to the space crease? Uh, we are working. Are you the only one working on it? Uh, we are two here working uh, at the space crease. Uh, I'm software developer there, and uh, one of them is uh, administrator of the space Chris. He manages data, and uh, we are testing both. And is it your full-time job, or are you also involved in other software development projects in the library? Uh, yes, I'm also. Uh, um, we are also developing uh, OGS, it's uh, Open Journal Systems. And we have working um, with it. Thanks. Um, yeah, of, of course, a national project uh, has a lot of challenges, uh, so it also means uh, um, technical effort, but also organizational effort, and uh, it may take uh, a long time, not depending on the on the skills of the of the technical team, of course. Uh, just to make a comparison, a setup for an institution takes uh, five days for us. So that's a really wide range of, uh, of effort, depending on what you want to do with your um, uh, repository. Yes, you're, you are right. It's big to develop and we are trying to um, work with also government, Ministry of Education and hope everything will be fine. Sure, it's very, very challenging. Yes. So I see that Vyacheslav is typing another question. And also, if others have questions, please type them, because we are coming to an end. So that's probably your last chance today to type mm -hmm. questions. And, so I will, uh, just profit like a road. This, uh, yeah. I will just profit from this time while you are writing to, to thank you, Irina, because you I've seen you've made a wonderful uh, job in uh, typing all the links in the chat while we were speaking. And uh, this is really great for everybody attending to have all this information available. So thank you very much for doing that. No, thanks. Thanks for being around and thanks for your willingness to, to speak. And uh, I will uh, send slides and we're also recording this session uh, and I'll send recording. Oh, Branko says uh, we we'll meet is asking uh, about... this meeting. Yeah, yeah, we'll be there. Yeah. We'll be presenting also this best case there. Nice. And Vyacheslav was asking uh, uh, what we will see in the future. What what new features do you expect to develop? Can you tell well, a little uh, bit about that? Uh, as I said, there's a, a growing interest towards uh, the integration of all information, especially research data. So I think that um, we are we are going to to work intensely on uh, on research data um, the, the the two main tasks that we have ahead uh, next year will be uh, version 7 
which means a lot of work uh, because the uh, interface is completely different. We will have to upgrade it to uh, the Angular version and the, and also the REST API in the back end. So there will be some a lot of technical work, which is not really uh, resulting in new functionality, but it is resulting in a new way to, to have the same functionality. But this is really a big effort. So I'm not sure that we will have uh, many new functionality next year because of this. But of course, the community is open. So if there's anybody wanting to add functionality and, and contribute to the software for the benefit of everybody, he will be uh, absolutely welcome and we can help uh, them put in, putting it up as, uh, as an extension. So we are very happy if anybody wants to jump into the community and extend the team of developers. And um, uh, then we will uh, also uh, start this uh, Dura Cloud service, uh, providing uh, permanent uh, um, uh, preservation, long-term preservation for uh, for research data deposited in this space, Chris. So uh, also Dura Cloud is a, a target for for next year. And uh, we will also be working on uh, some uh, more. Um, uh, extensive reporting because reporting is a feature of uh, commercial Chris uh, that we would like also to make available. This will take a little bit more time. Thanks. And Branka wrote another question. Is it going to be Angular 1x or newer TypeScript based? Oh, this is a very technical question. But I think if you go to the DuraSpace wiki and uh, look for uh, DSpace 7, um, uh, developers meetings uh, information everything is there and you will also find uh, all the choices that were made uh, the the roadmap and uh, and everything and uh, all the information is transparent and everybody can participate in the developers meetings they are open to everybody to every technician that would like to join also just for listening or maybe also for doing some work together so please go to the DuraSpace wiki for DSpace 7 and, and look at all the information available there. Thank you. Any other questions? I would also like to mention that uh, if you're working with this space, uh, we are planning another webinar, which is uh, questions and answers webinar on this space um, that will take place uh, on 12th of December, same, same time as today. Uh, I'll send out announcement about this shortly. So if you have any this space related questions, uh, that will be your opportunity to ask them and get your answers. Sir. So I guess if uh, there are no other questions, let's thanks, thank again our excellent presenters and um, thanks a lot I'll for... expect an email from us with mm -hmm. slides and recording. Thanks, and, thanks uh, Irina, and also have a nice thanks weekend. To, to Gwen for her wonderful support for the webinar. And thanks to the participants. Yeah. Thanks all of you and thank you. wish you all Bye. the best for the future. Bye-bye.